Today is going to be talking all about the suspension, what I like about it, but what changes I'm going to do to make the car a little bit quicker. So stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. So as you probably know, I designed and built my own double wishbone front suspension on the car. We now have three autocrosses under our belt and now we can try to figure out what changes we need to do to make the car a lot quicker. So far it's done really well. Uh, I've been able to finish in the, the top 20, which is not really where I wanted to be. Some of that is on my driving, not just driving the best that I have done in the past, uh, but some of it is also just in how the car is handling. Uh, before last year, I was in like closer to the top 10, if not in the top 10. Uh, so being in the top 20 is not where I wanted to be. I wanted to be up there fighting at the top, trying to get the top packs and getting the top in my class. So what changes do I need to do? I have noticed in the other autocrosses a lot of understeer. So that is meaning that the car is just not turning as well as it should be or how well it has in the past. Uh, so I go to turn and it will kind of uh, push out on me getting a lot of understeer. So what changes can I do to uh, mitigate that? Uh, I can change the sway bars. Uh, I did not change the sway bars at all from what I had previously. So what I have in the front is a large uh, CETA 35 millimeter uh, sway bar. And in the rear is a 21 millimeter like stock uh, style one. So I can reduce the front one to get a little bit uh, less oversteery or I can increase the rear one. I, I fear that if I decrease the front one, then I'm gonna get a little more uh, rollover than what I'm currently, and it's, it's looking and feeling pretty good on uh, the side-to-side -side movements there. So I could increase the rear one, but again, this is the same setup that I had last year, obviously with a completely different uh, front suspension style, but I think the rear is pretty dialed in at the moment. Uh, some other changes that I can do and that I'm going to do, so I've been reading a lot about caster. And one of the things that I noticed in the, the Griggs uh, installation, which my suspension is kind of modeled after theirs, is they say to use eight degrees of caster for autocross. Uh, if you guys remember, I'm only at like five to six degrees of caster. And with the strut style suspension that I had last year, I was around seven degrees of caster. So I am running less caster than uh, last year. I was thinking with this style suspension that I could run a little bit less, but that is proving to probably not be the case. Uh, and from the reading that I've been doing is you kind of want to run kind of as much caster as you can. Caster helps in uh, steering application. So as you steer, it will kind of uh, give you negative or positive camber on the right sides. Increased caster will also give you a jacking effect, meaning that as you turn, it's pushing the one wheel down into the ground, which is actually pushing the vehicle up and transferring uh, load to the adjacent uh, rear tire. So if I'm turning left, we're transferring weight to that uh, right rear tire and vice versa if you're turning right. Uh, so that jacket effect can help with uh, reducing understeer and giving you more oversteer if you go too far, uh, but it will help with turn in and it will reduce understeer. So I'm gonna do some measurements to kind of see where we're at now. And then we will add some more caster in uh, maybe I'll go to that eight degrees that uh, Griggs kind of suggest, and we will see how the camber changes in the, in the turning. Obviously, I'm not really gonna have roll factored into it. 
I don't want to be taking out the coilovers and putting in the mock-up uh, tools in there to be able to put them at different heights. I could do that to try to get factor and roll also with the steering. But for right now, we are just going to do steering. We're going to turn it uh, left to right, do some measurements on the, the camber and see how that kind of changes as we increase the caster. So let's get a base numbers down first of kind of where we're at, and then we will add more caster and go from there. Okay, the numbers are in and they're not quite what I was hoping for. Uh, so this is just base numbers. So I have lowered the car since uh, I originally set the alignment, which I know is going to affect my numbers and is why these numbers are different than what I had originally set in the alignment uh, a couple videos ago. So I had set it to or I thought around six degrees of caster. I am now at four degrees of caster on the driver's side and 4.5 on the passenger side. So not as much caster as I thought I had and as I want. Uh, the camber is still pretty good. I'm at negative 2.5 on the driver's side and negative two and three eighths on the passenger side. So the camber is still kind of where I had set it. When you turn to the left, the driver's side goes to negative 0.75 and the passenger side goes to negative 2.75. So we are gaining negative camber on the, the passenger side when we're turning to the left and positive on the driver's side as you want. And then it's vice versa. If you're turning to the right, the driver's side goes to negative 2.75 and the passenger side goes to negative 0.25. Uh, so those numbers are all uh, pretty decent, but we are going to add a lot more caster to it and we'll see what our camber change is at that point. I have increased the caster on the front. I went to eight degrees kind of as the Griggs installation said to do. And that increased my static camber up to two and seven eighths on this side and negative two and three quarters on that side. So it increased it just a hair on both sides. But the big thing is when we turn the wheel, we now have a lot more uh, negative when we turn one direction and then the other side is positive and you can kind of see the car raising up and it doesn't really want to stay uh, turned. It wants to try to go back straight, which is what uh, we want and kind of how the car uh, was set up before. So as this side raises up, that is transferring the load to that uh, opposite rear corner. So when we are turning left, we now have a positive five eighths on this side and a negative three and seven eighths on that side. So that is more than uh, a whole negative degree on that that side, and then you know close to a more more than a positive uh, on gain on uh, this driver's side. And then when you turn to the right, it's uh, completely opposite. You get uh, negative on this side and positive on that side. And same with that, that side is now raising up, jacking, putting it to this uh, driver's side rear. So that should really help 
with the, the traction and the steering of the car. We're now hopefully transferring some of the grip more to the front to make the less understeer. Uh, it should hopefully do better in like self-steering also. That is something that I really liked about the car is I could kind of let go of the wheel and it would center back up. And I haven't really played around with it too much uh, since putting the suspension on to know if it was still doing that, but having the positive four degrees of caster, it most likely was not, or not at the severity that it was before. So I'm hoping these small changes, just a simple caster change, will make the car dramatically different and uh, way better to drive and steer. Another thing, I think the traction control system is fixed, which will be really good. Uh, it's nice having a launch control. It's nice having the traction control in uh, rain events or in the last event, it was uh, spinning tires quite a bit, which the traction control would have probably uh, eliminated. But also I think having this uh, suspension change will help out with that. But I updated the firmware on the unit and it seems to be working okay now. I'll keep an eye on it, but I think think it's working better now. So maybe it was just needed a, a firmware up, upgrade. I checked all the wiring. So maybe I fixed something in my checking of wiring that maybe was coming loose. I reset the pins on those. I do want to change the connectors on that uh, unit. But for now, we will see how it goes. Uh, so thank you guys for watching and about to get the car loaded up for another autocross. We got a lot of them uh, back to back and then we'll have a little bit of a, a break, but another autocross coming up. So stay tuned. See you guys.